Is the car easy to drive? Yeah, it's easy to drive. But who drives a car like that? My name is Bob Goff. I drive a 67 Plymouth Barracuda. Happens to be a Formula S package. It looks uh, outwardly stock, but it's moderately modified underneath the hood and in the suspension area. My dad was in the Air Force. I was about 13 years of age. We were transferred to France. I was introduced to sports cars of all ilk. Alphas, Maseratis, Ferraris, and I became a sports car guy. When we returned, I kind of looked down my nose at American Iron because they generally went straight very fast, couldn't stop or couldn't steer. When I was 19 years of age, the car debuted from Detroit, and I thought it was Detroit's answer to a poor man's Aston Martin in terms of its styling. But I come to find out later on that the Formula S Barracuda was an option package that made all of that bad handling characteristics go away and you still got the performance of the big American V8, but it tended to handle more like a sports car. I have taken it to a point to not be the fastest street car on the planet, but it's fast enough to be a fun car to drive. For example, I installed a uh, Tremec five-speed gearbox. Suspension modifications, I've stiffened up the chassis somewhat, looked at the brakes, and uh, had some 15-inch custom steely wheels made that look like the muscle car era wheel. Those cars were made in 1967 with 14-inch wheels, but uh, it uh, gives me a little bit better feel for the road with a decent tire underneath it at 15 inches in diameter. The engine was originally a 273 V8 of 235 horsepower. In 1968, Plymouth came out with the 340 V8, which put out 275 horsepower. I put one of those in from a 1969 car with a little hotter can, probably around 380 horsepower. It's a very docile car to drive, but uh, it, the car was made to be taken out on the open road and the back roads and have fun with. The car is surprisingly well handling. I have to tip the hat to the Chrysler engineers who developed that suspension and braking package. All the sports car guys think they own the road, and uh, I hang with them in the tight turns, except the extremely tight turns. But once we get on the straightaway, I like to say in torque we trust, it's goodbye Porsche. When we collect back at a restaurant for lunch, these guys can't believe that I was able to hang with them. They want to know what suspension modifications I've done. Hardly any. Yeah, it's got nitrogen shocks. Those weren't available in 1967. Other than that, it's pretty much stock underneath. It does surprise a lot of the sports car guys. Everybody knows the build quality back in, from Detroit was pretty poor, no matter if you were Mopar, GM, or Ford. And I will attest that things don't fit very well on my particular Barracuda. A lot of Mopars is very prone to rear wheel lockup under hard braking. So when you enter a turn, you gotta be prepared for that. You gotta be going slow. If you go too fast and dial in a little turn and hit the brake hard, you could be eating guardrail. In my research on restoring the car. I found that the Formula S Barracuda was actually rallied by a Chrysler engineer by the name of Scott Harvey on some very rough logging roads across the Rocky Mountains in 1967. I came to find that Scott Harvey lived in Southern California and I was lucky enough to meet the guy. He in turn asked me to help him enter his race cars in the La Carrera Panamericana vintage rally race down in Mexico and eventually I became Scott Harvey's navigator for about three years in Porsches and a Dodge Colt up here in SCCA Special Stage Rallying. I'm a frustrated car designer since high school days. I think they hit a home run with a 67 Plymouth Barracuda. It was designed to be kind of a European look about it. 
The fastback enabled the designers to come up with a very unique folding rear seat. It folds dead flat for seven feet. I have slept in the back of this car. These cars are never done. I'm building a stroker engine around a 340. It's gonna cube out to 416, probably put about 425 to 450 horsepower. Also thinking of fuel injecting the car. That'll uh, add a lot of tractability and reliability. I'll probably improve the fuel economy, although nobody builds cars like this to save gas. A couple of kinds of car people. Some people have to have a lot of cars and they buy and sell. I'm not of that ilk. I came across that car in the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, it's just one of those soulmate types of cars. The more I've improved on it and the more I've driven it, the more it's just become part of my life. I can't see getting rid of it.